Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy, mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 119 verses 9 through 16. It may be found on page 764 of the Book of Common Prayer, as well as in your bulletin. Let's say it together. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By keeping to your words. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your comments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. 
I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. and Where I am, there will my servants be also. Whoever serves me the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You know, it's very easy for me to think about Jesus, the Son of God, helping lepers and blind people, casting out demons, turning a fish, few fish and a loaf of bread into meal, a meal for 5,000 people with plenty of leftovers and walking on water. And it's no stretch at all when I think about him calling out Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and anybody else for the way they were twisting the law and treating people. I guess that's because I'm just more comfortable elevating Jesus the Son of God. I mean, seriously, God could and does all that stuff and more. He created everything in the very beginning, after all. It would be absurd to think God's Son would be any less capable and willing to bestow these gifts and standing up to do some righteous calling out. 
How could I possibly be expected to do any of that stuff as a follower of Jesus, the Son of God? In a very real way, I let it let me off the hook sometimes. I have to admit, though, that it's pretty hard for me to consider Jesus the Son of Man, having to deal with any of the regular people stuff. I'm talking about Jesus being hot, sweaty, and dusty from walking from place to place all over Galilee and beyond. And after all that walking and being with people almost all the time, Jesus was likely just bone weary every once in a while. I love people, being with people, working with people, loving people. But honestly, sometimes I just plain get peopled out and need to spend some downtime all by myself. Maybe that's why Jesus sometimes went away privately to recover from being peopled out. It's just hard for me to think of Jesus and his humanness. Maybe that's because human Jesus lived at the pinnacle of moral and ethical action. We hear about it in today's gospel, Jesus being troubled, wondering what he should do. And that forces me to consider that human Jesus had some of the same wonderings about his ability to handle life rightly, just like us. And I'm back on the hook. Now, I'm not trying to diminish in any way who Jesus was then, is now, and ever shall be. And I'm certainly not denying the doctrine of hypostatic union. Jesus is truly human and truly divine. You can read about it later in the Creed of San Athanasius on page 865 of the Book of Common Prayer. It's the second part of the Creed. However, I do think we can learn a lot from truly human Jesus especially since we are so familiar with the human condition and, well, the challenges of being human and being Christian. Jesus said, Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it's for this reason that I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus knew human frailty when grappling with tough decisions because he had been there. He had been in the tough, how do I know what the right choice place is place. He understood that, how do I get out of this spot, spot. Jesus wondered if he could do the right thing. The, is there any way somebody else will handle this for me question had to be confronted by the Son of Man. Being truly human was much more than just a theological mystery. It was part of Jesus' reality. If we think about it, that will hit us where we live. How many times do we worry, mull over, and lose sleep when faced with a tough decision? Can we count the times we have wondered if anybody can get us out of the ethical and moral dilemma in which we find ourselves? How in the world are we going to figure this thing out? Do we have to do the right thing? Is there any moral or ethical latitude to which we can cling? Do we have the faith and courage to take the high road and honor our moral and ethical standards as followers of Jesus. And just who might have our back? Just because Jesus always got it right doesn't mean I have to get it right even part of the time, does it? Let's give this some serious pondering. To put these particular verses in John in context, 
We need to know the before and after of the story. Before this event in Jesus' life, we had, he had been going around the country, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, teaching the disciples, moving around the entire region, teaching people by word and example, and casting out demons. Those miracles and teachings healed souls and strengthened people to live a life of love. Jesus called out the wrongs that were happening in the region because of the self-serving interpretation of the law by those in power and the ones who just plain liked the life that abuse of the law made possible. The laws that held regular, hard-working people back and down made it hard for folks to have enough to eat, a safe place to live, and to take good care of their children and elderly. The precise conditions that made them especially successful to sickness, poverty, and fear. This is the world Jesus, the Son of Man, human just like us, grew up in and lived in as an adult. Folks, if we dare ourselves to think about it honestly, we live in a world not so very different from the one Jesus lived in. Right here in Warner Robins, Georgia, there are a lot of folk who don't have enough to eat, some nothing at all. And those neighborhoods we're able to avoid are certainly way short on safe, affordable housing. The children, our children, if we're honest, struggle in school, making it almost impossible to make a better life for themselves as adults. And our community's elderly lack the security and basic needs to live peacefully with confidence that it's all gonna be okay. What do we humans gathered at All Saints Episcopal Church here in Warner Robins do? Is it really our problem? Yes, we are all children of God, brothers and sisters, and sometimes in the role of mothers and fathers, loving all our neighbors enough to care for them as strongly as we care for our nuclear and extended families. And we've made a start to care. We have an active food pantry to feed the hungry. And under that particular ministry umbrella, we have the opportunity to really listen to their frustrations, fears, needs, and sometimes their holy anger. In other words, to be fully present with them. Sometimes we're even able to offer some financial assistance to keep them in their homes, keep the power on, or if necessary, to pay for a few nights in a hotel because of an eviction. I know the COVID pandemic has gotten in the way of a lot of ministry opportunities to each other and our community. It does seem to be turning around it will be a grand day when we are able to gather in the church to worship together, even though it's going to be different. It's going to be wonderful to hug our children and grandchildren safely. But let us not forget the rest of our family. I pray that soon we will be able to plan for Path to Shine for the next school year and beyond that we will continue to support the schools with which we have built relationships and find new ways to minister to our community. Yes, I mean advocating strenuously for those changes in our public structure that holds folk back. In the next several days, we will reach the place and space in our liturgical year to renew our baptismal covenant. We will stand together and profess what we will believe and what we will do. Some of us may ask ourselves, can I really do this all the time? We know that we will try most of the time, but maybe not all the time. Perhaps a lot of us, 
maybe even all of us, will be caught up short when we get to those last three questions and realize the moral and ethical standards we profess. We're promising ourselves and each other that we will do everything we can to make real for all people Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. In short, by our renewed covenant, we are proclaiming we will serve Jesus with God's help. We don't know what challenges and opportunities tomorrow will bring. Maybe it will be one of those days that offers a grand time of easy decisions and a gracious day of loving and being loved. It's possible it will be one of those days that we are confronted with a situation that claims our confidence and we are just plain troubled. We may start by trying to find a way out or get somebody else to take the challenge and be faithful and courageous. Being human is like that. But maybe, just maybe, when the going gets tough, we will remember Jesus the Son of Man, and His soul being troubled. And if we live into our covenant, we will draw on our faith and courage to step into the reason we have come to this hour. We will, with God's help. And God will. Amen. Standing as you're able, please join me in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 1, found on page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer and in your bulletin. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy for our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this city, 
For every city and community and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the, the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, to thee O Lord our God. God. Be gracious to your people, we entreat you, O Lord, that they, repenting day by day of the things that displease you, may be more and more filled with love of you and of your commandments, and being supported by your grace in this life may come to the full enjoyment of eternal life in your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
with you. And also with you. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Look mercifully on this your family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.